first quarter of the show, it's time to chop it up. On this Chopping It Up segment, we're going to talk about aging as an athlete. Me and Pat P, we're Laker fans. And unfortunately, the Lakers took one on the chin. LeBron James, in year 18, dealing with ankle ailments, didn't look like the LeBron James that we've seen in years past. Mm -hmm. Father time will always catch up with you, regardless of who you are, especially when you're playing an active sport, baseball, I mean, mostly football, basketball, hockey, track. And talking about athletes when they're aged, Pat P, you've talked about this. We even had Champ Bailey on the show a few weeks ago. If you missed that Champ Bailey show, it's in your feed. Go check it out. An unbelievable conversation with one of the GOATs to ever do it at the cornerback position. But people are finally saying that Father Time is catching up LeBron James. And at some point in time, it will. When you talk about aging as an athlete, Pat P, how, ha how have you attacked aging? And you're still young. You're about to be, what, 31 in a month or so. But clearly, you're not the same guy that you were when you were 23, 24, 25. So how have you attacked the aging element to your game to be able to still play at a high level? Just keeping the mind sharp for the most part. You know, you know this better than anybody. You know, in the game, in, in football, it's only – a certain amount of things that an outside receiver can do to you. And obviously if you if you're if you're losing speed or you know you can't run like you like you can, now you have to use your brain. You know, because at the end of the day, that's what guys always tell you when you come into the league anyway. You're gonna use 80% of your brain, 20% of your athletic ability. And if you're overdoing if you're just solely dependent on your athletic ability, you won't be in this league very long no or question. any profession very long, like far as an athletic uh, profession. So, you know, as the years go on and you, I mean, at, at times you will start to see some of your skill set diminish a little bit, but that's what the off season is for. So you can continue to try to try to get that to a point to where you feel comfortable knowing that you may, may lost a little bit and then may, now you may have to change around your training. Now, like I said, now you have to use a little bit to put your body in better position. So for me, you know, I just look at look at a ton of film, you know, seeing how how I can avoid receivers from stacking me, you know, because that's mm -hmm. one of the things that we as a DB never want to have because these guys are good enough to put the ball wherever they want, wherever they want the ball to be. So the biggest thing is just watching a ton of film, trying to put myself, my body in the best position possible, trying to understand what's coming at me before it happens, you know, so. And, and another thing is just taking care of your body. You know what I mean? Because like like you uh, like we like you talked about LeBron James, obviously having those nagging uh, injuries uh, throughout the season. You know, I think this is the most games he's ever missed in his in his 17 year career. And you know, we all know LeBron has been 100 miles per hour ever since he got into the league. You know, it was only a matter of time to where you know Father Time will you know eventually catch up with him, but. You know, we all know LeBron puts a lot of money into his body. We know he's one of the smartest, uh, have one of the highest basketball IQs um, um, that ever played the game. So, you know, I don't, I just, I think that was just one of those nagging injuries. And with him having, because, you know, LeBron had ankle injuries all the time and played, you know, two weeks or not two weeks, two days after that injury mm -hmm. happened. It's just now when you get older, no it takes your body a little bit longer to uh to uh to recover so the biggest thing is your mind you continue treating your body putting that investment in your body because you know like my uh, my old deepest coordinator used to say you know if you if you're making an, an investment right how would you feel are you going to be devastated that you lost a dollar investment versus a million dollar investment no question so your investment is your body you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to invest in your body, invest in your mind. So when it is time for you to perform, the investment going to pay out. And Pat P, you, you've mentioned on one of our past shows that you spend around 300K annually on your body. Ha has that changed as, as you're getting older? Mm -hmm. um, and what is in detailed in that financial investment into your body do you eat a certain type of way during the, during the season do you drink certain things do you go to sleep at a certain time you know what are the detail information uh what what detailed information do you have regarding what you need to do to get your body together 
Well, the, the biggest thing what young guys don't understand is sleep is the most cost-effective recovery that you can ever have. I mean, you don't have to pay a damn thing to get some rest. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's free. And, That's and, free. Like, I'm all for, you know, having a good time, relishing the moment. But at some point, that partying, that, you know, whatever you're doing, extracurricular, going to have to stop because your body's paying a toll. Mm -hmm. you know, so I still do. I spend around, I spend around about that much, around 250 to 300 on my body. I have a personal coach. Mm -hmm. Get a massage twice a week. Um, I got a cry. I got a uh, hyperbaric chamber. Um, uh, I got. Uh, I put a sauna in my house mm -hmm. because all those things to me, I felt that that's what's going to help keep my muscles uh, loose. Uh, yeah. You know that I feel that that if I'm able to, you know, continue. To, uh, I get Pilates in all. Do Pilates in all season. Yoga in all season. Just things I feel that can help me stay limber because. Mm -hmm. Like you, like we talked about earlier, as we get older, our body changes, our, no our ability change. You know, our ligaments may get a little weak. You might get, you know, you with us playing the sports, uh, playing in the sports world, arthritis may catch up with you. Mm -hmm. so Especially so depending on where you're playing at when that cold weather come in effect. Right. Exactly. So those are the things that you have to uh, account for. But the biggest thing, Mike, is getting rest. So, so during the season, when my kids go to sleep, I go to sleep. And my kids are asleep by 8, 8.30. Mm -hmm. So then I probably I probably go to bed around probably like 9, 9.30. Because, you know, I got to get the personal time uh, to with, the, with the lady or if I need to do some extra studying or whatever. Yeah. You know, I'll knock that out. But I'm, I'm definitely asleep by 9.30, 100%. Okay. Last question for you before we transition to school check-in. You talked about the body aspect and what you've been what you've done to continue to be ready to go mentally as of late what's the most the the most recent thing you've learned about playing cornerback that could help continue to elevate your game when it comes to being where you need to be covering wide receivers and i like to highlight something i watched they were you were mic'd up over a week ago at OTAs and they were showing you go through your drills you're playing off technique uh it was basically a drill you're playing off technique uh, covering a go route. And when you opened up, when he threatened your cushion, you saw you, the, eyes, huh? the eyes went directly to the hip. And yeah. it was the ideal coaching tape because so often for us as DBs, when we open up, we don't keep our eye on the hips. We instantly go to their eye level. And now you're watching them where they can easily manipulate you, you with their head movement or their eyes. But what you did was you emphasized the hip and th what that does for DBs, for corners, when they drop their hips, that's the first indicator that they're getting ready to run an intermediate route. They get ready to break it off. Mm -hmm. And that was a thing of beauty. So just exercising your eyes is something I know you live by, you die by. But what are some of the new nuances that you've been able to add to your game mentally to be able to be ready to dominate this upcoming season? Put your coaching hat on for us and let us know. Um, I probably have to say just being more, just probably playing, playing more off. You know, ever since I, t I was speaking to, ever since we had that conversation with um, Champ Bailey, mm -hmm. he was talking about how it was, because I feel like my eyes are a blessing and a curse. No question, they can't be. Like, most most, yeah. most DBs will say the same thing. Right. And yeah. I feel like I have once, like when my eyes on is on something, it's very hard to get me off it. So if it like, like if I'm focusing on, if I'm off, all right, I'm in my head saying that, all right, when I turn, I gotta keep my eyes low because that's gonna be my indicator when he, if, if he's breaking down for a route or a stop or a dig or whatever the case may be, or if he's gonna continue pushing, push me up the field, convert that to a goal, a deeper route, a goal, post, comeback, et cetera. So, if my eyes are bad, you know, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a bad rep. So my main focus is literally don't let my eye, don't let my eye see what I don't see, mm. if that makes sense. I wanna see what I'm focusing on throughout the whole route. You know, if I, so if I'm, if I'm playing off man, I wanna keep my eyes on, on, on my guy until I get the ball indicated, until I dissect the route versus looking back earlier. Because some of the things I, I when I'm looking at tape last year, I was in perfect position on a bunch of balls. It was just, I wasn't 
I wasn't on the receiver just yet. And, and I, as we all know, the quarterback's not throwing us the ball. No. They throw the receiver the ball. Yeah. So and they're trying like, to throw where you where, where you not at. Exactly. And I felt like sometimes that I I, I just look back a tad bit too early to where now I'm almost kind of like traveling. I've been tracking down the ball versus being tighter to my receiver where the ball is going to be able to defend the ball a little bit better. But so this year, I just I mean, this offseason, I just literally just been working on my eyes like you alluded to in that tape. When I turn, I want to make sure my eyes are in the right position. When I'm in press, I want to make sure my eyes are in the, eyes are in the right position. When I'm zone turn, I want mm. to make sure my eyes are in the right position because my eyes, like I said, can be a blessing and a curse. But when they, when my eyes are right, they ain't going to lie to me. It's go time. No doubt about it. It's go time. And then after that, just react. You know, and, playing and, cornerback is nothing, about, is nothing but reacting. Yeah, man. And, and if I, I can see the ball, it's over. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to have it. Hey, we like it. We like it. Quality insight from one of the best to do it, Pat Peterson, talking about body, talking about mind. That's what you got to do, especially as you continue to age. And one thing you can, you, you must understand, you must know, the body will age, but the mind would never age. Never. When it comes to playing sports, especially if you continue to perfect your craft. Yep. Minnesota Viking fans, it's time for your favorite part of the show. Skull check-in. Here's where we tap in with Pat P to give us all the updated information regarding your Minnesota Vikings. As you see us here on YouTube, you see Pat P. He has on his golfing attire. P2 for three. That's what he says on his hat. Make sure you go get you one. Pat didn't have any practices. They didn't get on the grass today, no practice. They decided to go out, have a golf tournament, I think a charity, a charity tournament. Pat P, how did you do? How did your team do today on the golf course? Uh, I think we played. I think we played respectable. Um, you know, although they was using the majority of my balls, um, but <laughs> we had a good day. I think we finished seven under, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know where that you know placed, but uh, I had a good group of guys. Like I said, I was playing with the team doctors of the team, so don't 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 want to get well acquainted with those guys. <laughs> you know, outside of uh, golf or anything like that. But for the most part, uh, I think we finished like seven under. So okay. That's pretty good. Respectable, like you scramble, said. It's a, a scramble format, so everybody get the opportunity to hit and take the best ball from each shot from there. No doubt, no doubt. Now let's transition to the football field. The newest news coming from Minnesota, you guys made an addition to the secondary. Bashad Breeland signed with the Vikings, former fourth year, fourth round selection out of Clemson, won a Super Bowl with Kansas City, made it to the Super Bowl again with Kansas City last year, entering his eighth season in the NFL. He's expected to compete for the starting, the starting cornerback job opposite of you uh, with Cam Dantzler. Uh, were you surprised to see that signing uh, with Breland, how much do, do do you know about him? And with him playing in Kansas City, will you eventually reach out to Tyron Matthew, friend of the show, to kind of get a little insight about the player, the new player you guys just brought in? Yeah, for sure. I remember when um, Breland was, I think he was, went right, well, right before he left Washington and went to Kansas City, I was trying to get him out to, uh, to Arizona. Yeah, I okay. was to Arizona. So, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with his play. Uh, don't know him personal, personally, but I will definitely – reach out to Tyron because I saw he was on our radar that we was gonna pop we brought him in for a visit and things like that. And I know Zim like those veteran corners. So I think he can come in right away and just, you know, provide that provide that 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 leadership, that big brother role. He played in big games. So he know he knows how to prepare made plays in big games. So we can he can um come in here and um help the young guys uh along with me, Harrison and uh McKenzie you know, show these guys the ropes. You know, I think that's the biggest thing of uh, just, you know, giving back to the, the younger g generation so we know the game is in good hands once we, we do decide to hang up our cleats. And speaking of young guys, uh, Cam Dantzler, a second year player from Mississippi State, uh, made some plays that last year, but like most co young cornerbacks do, they give up a few as well. What have you seen from him in year two uh, for this upcoming season so far during OTAs? Um, Cam's looking really good, man. You, you can tell he's more comfortable now. He understands the scheme. He understands what he cannot give up in certain defenses now. And that's the biggest thing. You know, as a young guy, you just try to cover everything. You know, you just try to cover the whole field when you only have the responsibility of either covering your guy yep. or covering a certain part of the field. You know what I mean? So 
I think now with him going through that year that he did last year, having an opportunity to have 16, 16 games to look at, to see what he can do to, to, to better himself, to put himself in a better position. And I think he's done that. I think he, 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 he had a great off season. Um, coming into OTAs, um, looking real good. Uh, I didn't know he was that tall. You know, Cam, Cam got some uh, nice size on him. I couldn't tell you his official height, but he oh, he's long. About, yeah, he looks about six two, six three. Yeah, and and he can run. You know, so that's a uh, you know that's what Zim like as well on the outside, bigger corners that can run and that 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 can hold up their their own. I think by him going through that season last year, having an opportunity to look at film, uh, I'm, I'm expecting a big year for him. Yeah, he's listed at at six two, so you know that's the official height. But that's basically six three. You know, depending on who you're asking. So he has the right. range, uh, and and I think he's Y'all set up to have up. a real yeah, no question, no question. I think he's set up to have a real good year this upcoming season, year two for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, but there you have it. Score check in the most noteworthy news coming from Minnesota: the addition of Bashad Breeland veteran eighth year corner signing with the Minnesota Vikings definitely would add will add competition uh, to the secondary specifically speaking the cornerback position let's see how that plays out throughout the course of the year yeah you know what time it is it's almost time for halftime but before we get into the half to make our adjustments we got to check Pat P mentos see exactly where he is with has Pat Heard but before we dive into has Pat Heard Carolina Panther fans NFC fans, NFC South fans, make sure you stay tuned because on the opposite side of the half, we will be joined by second year talented stud player, Derek Brown, Carolina Panthers starting defensive tackle will be joining us on the opposite side. So make sure you stay tuned. But before we get to halftime, has Pat hurt? This is a segment in our show where we tap in to see if Pat has been paying attention to what's happening in the sporting world outside of the Minnesota Vikings. He's moving around, he's on a golf course, so he doesn't necessarily be in tune to what's happening. So we decided to implement this in the show. His overall record, 37 of 54. So out of 54 questions, he's gotten 37 right. That percentage is 69%, real good percentage. Last week, he went three out of three. So what we decided to do, the committee, reached out to fans of the show, listeners of the show, to kind of get their input, Pat P. <laughs> so you felt real good last week. Yeah. You know, you're on your high horse. I don't know if that horse is going to be so high this week. Gonna be high first, hey, first question for you. Julio Jones traded to the Tennessee Titans. I know you know that. Mm-hmm. But the question is, Tennessee, they're sending two picks to Atlanta. What picks are they? Not the specific number, but what round? Second and fourth. I want to know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So it, real quick. it was hard. It, honestly, Matt, that was a hard one not to see because obviously that was a blockbuster trade. No question. And as soon as that went off, every, I mean, Every network, every news channel, every sport network, they knew all the details. And I happened to uh, fall across it. Because I thought, I thought it was going to, because I knew they was looking for a first rounder. Yeah, they didn't get thought, it. Yeah, they didn't get the first rounder, which I was uh, not surprised by. But I think, I think two and four is, is reasonable. I think, yeah. I, I think, I think that's a, a solid trade. And they, and they got players too, right? No, they just got, they got Atlanta <laughs> sent a fourth with Julio to Tennessee, but okay. Atlanta receive a, a, a two and a four, which is kind of similar to what we saw. Um, I think DeAndre Hopkins, when the Texans traded DeAndre yeah. Hopkins away, I think they got a second and something back in return, along with the player too. David Johnson was involved in that as well. So, um, you know, Julio uh, has been dealing with some injuries, but when he's on the football field, he's a beast. All-time leading wide receiver, NFL all-time leading wide receiver in receiving yards per ball game. 95.5 is the exact number in 2020. Uh, he missed seven ball games, but he had over 700 yards, 51 receptions, and three receiving touchdowns. So your overall thoughts about that trade is what? Um, um, I mean, if you look at it, for Tennessee. Tennessee is going for to be Tennessee. Some, yeah, for Tennessee. I like the trade, you know, because it's now it's you putting them to. in, you know, the last couple of years. They made the playoffs last year? I'm not sure. Yeah, they made the playoffs. So they made the they made the playoffs two years in a row, made the AFC championship two uh not this last season, but the previous season. Yep. They got a good running back. 
They got the quarterback that's going to pretty much manage the clock and put the ball where it needs to be. I think I saw a stat of Matt, I mean, uh, of Ryan over the last two years. I think he's like top five in every category. Or something, something like that. I might be wrong, but I know, mm-hmm. he's up, I know he's in the upper echelon in the last two seasons with him being a starter quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. And now that they add Julio Jones, um, you know, A.J. Brown already, you know, is a freak of himself. So now having a true three-headed monster, mm. I, think, I think the sky's going to be the limit for him. I, I, like I said, I really like the trade. You can tell Tennessee is trying to do something to win now. You know, yeah. they, they've been on the door, the doorstep a couple of times and felt like there was a couple of pieces away. I think this is a guy that can definitely get him over a hump because, as we saw over the, you know, ever since Julio's been in the league, he's been averaging 1,200 yards. No question. And I misspoke. The Falcons are sending a six with Julio. Six. They're sending a six, a six round select, a six round pick with Julio. And you guys have been tied for quite some time. I mean, you were the fifth selection in your draft in 2011. I think Julio was six. He was right behind you. Um, so uh, you guys have always been connected to some degree, especially with the SEC days. But seeing this move, like you said, this is huge for Tennessee. My only concern with Tennessee how much improved would the defense be? Because that was the Achilles heel last year. Couldn't yeah. stop anybody, couldn't put any pressure on opposing quarterbacks. If they can find a way to get better offensively, like you said, with Derrick Henry, A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, you know, you lost John O. Smith, so that tight end position yeah. could have some concerns as well. But they're going to be a well-balanced offense. So defensively, if they can kind of improve their play, uh, this definitely will be a playoff caliber team next year, this upcoming season. So you got the first question, right? You was... I didn't even finish the question. So, okay, you on your A game so far. You will see. Next question for you. Chad Johnson fought uh, on the Mayweather Paul undercard. Who did he say he was ready for during his post match interview? My man said he ready for Con- Connor, baby. He really want Connor McGregor. He want him now. Chad said he broke his virginity last, uh, last night. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> the crazy part about it, everybody's joking about Chad getting knocked down. But he was winning. He definitely was winning that fight. He was winning. He didn't. He, he, he looked like he belonged in the ring. He didn't look like a guy who this was his first time. He looked more comfortable. You know what I mean? I, remember we saw Nate Robinson some months ago. Didn't look as comfortable. Now, nah, Nate, you know, uh, I, I commend Nate for going in there and doing what he did. But, yeah, now, nah, to me, it just looked like Nate was in a street fight versus a boxing match. No <laughs> question. I mean, just throwing some wild punches, not guarding his chin. You know, I, I, and granted, too, now, Paul is is almost like how Floyd was early on in the fight when he fought, uh, J- or was it Jake, right? He fought Jake. Yeah, yeah, Floyd fought Jake. So the same way, because you, you saw the, you, we saw the Logan, side. no, Floyd, I'm sorry, Floyd fought Logan. All right, so yeah, so when Nate fought J- uh, Jake. Jake. It kind of got the same body stature, like Floyd and, and Nate about the same height. Yeah, yeah. Floyd's yeah. a professional, so he knew, he knew how to get in, get inside. Nate ain't know how to do that. You know what I mean? So I feel like, you know, that, that, that I feel like Nate should have fought somebody that had a similar structure to him. Measurable. Yeah. Measurable. I think he would have had a better opportunity, you know, you know, a better chance of standing on his two feet at the end of that fight versus being knocked down what two or three times. Real quick before we transition to the next question. Uh, is there another NFL star? Pass yeah. or present, you would love to see in the match. Boxing DJ ring. Swellinger, man. I would love to see DJ get in the ring. Who that? DJ Swellinger. Oh, okay. And why yeah. is that? Because I've, I've been seeing DJ, actually, he, he trained every offseason. I've been knowing DJ for, what, six years? Mm-hmm. And I, he trained every offseason boxing. That's like his condition. And, you know, looking at him on, on, uh, on tape, he looks good. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He got the movement, got hand speed, got the head movement, got nice jab. Um, you know, I think he looks really good. So I would like to see DJ in the, in the ring, man, a young bull in the ring. Okay. Well, DJ, Pat P, threw your name out there. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, they gave Floyd a meal for eight minutes. So that ain't, that ain't a bad day's work if you can stay on your feet. No doubt about it. No question. All right, next question for you. Has Pat heard? What big time college coach just received an extension? Mm. Well, we got it. I don't know. What big time coach? Yep. Just received an, hey, I think it's a three year extension. 
I mean, there's only three of them worthy of a three year uh, of, of an extension. It got to be, and I don't think I saw this. It wasn't Nick Saban. Uh, it could, it could be. No, I would have saw that too. Now you got me on this one, Matt. Ah, we had him on the show. We had him on the show, and it was a coach, big time yeah, hey, college coach. College coach, we only had Nick Saban. Nope, we had other coaches. And we Jimbo, had- Kirby. Oh, okay. Herm. Yeah, I probably go. It probably got to be Kirby because he's coming up to the end of his deal. Wrong. Who was it? It was Nick Saban. It was Nick. Nick got a three-year extension. Okay. He, at the end of this deal, he'll be 77. Okay. Because I know I remember extension. he signed like a 10-year deal, uh, maybe a seven-year deal like five years ago, right? Well, yeah. I, he was in the, on the, in the contentions of getting, well, that's when Texas was trying to get him. Yep. Okay, we got you on there. You missed one. Now, I remember last week when you got three for three right, you were hollering about, you know, y'all don't need to just ask me questions regarding sports. You know, I'm well-rounded in anything news related. So what we decided to do was, okay, some fans came up with this one. Another royal baby was born. Oh, yeah. What did Meghan Marco and Prince Harry name their girl? Lily something. It's like Lily Pad or something like that. L- Lily Bet. Yeah, Lily Bet. There you yeah, go. Lily Bet Diana. <laughs> okay. I All did right. that. All right. It's the last question for you. You got that one right. Oh, <laughs> this is a good one. Jeff Bezos is planning a notable trip after resigning at Amazon. Where is he going? Damn. You're a traveler. You love traveling. But I don't know if you want to go to this place. I know. I saw a picture of it. I'm trying to think. It just, it just came out like maybe a week ago. Damn. Now you got me on this one. All right. But yeah, I did man. see that. I saw, I saw a picture of it. It was on. A, you heard it too. Uh, out of space. He's planning on traveling out of space. So um, who is the guy? It was another guy that was trying to, um, cause I thought he was into this too about these, uh, what company was trying to do that. It was trying to build a jet mm-hmm. that can get you from LA to Japan in like three hours or something like that. Yeah, I heard I heard about that. Was he was he a part of that investment? I, I don't know if Jeff Bezos was a part of that or Elon Musk was. I know Elon Musk was, but I thought Jeff was involved in that too. But I yeah. did I, I did see the picture. I did I remember seeing them talk about it, yeah. but I can't remember where what he what the hell he was going. Yeah, he's so going I, on a rocket ship called Blue Origin. Blue Origin out of space. Out of space. That's a heck of a trip. Yeah, Resigning. Maybe building like a like a two hundred million dollar like a uh, new amazon um mm-hmm. headquarters somewhere jeff got jeff got so much money if, if if too much was ever a thing it would be jeff right, right. <laughs> if, if too much was ever a thing or a person it, it would jeff. be jeff no question all right so you got that one wrong i think you were what four for two no man three for five man three for five. i'm sorry three for five three for five my bad my bad <laughs> good job three for five you didn't get everything right but yeah i mean that's 60 percent. yeah you above you above you're above 50%. Now it's time for seven questions. Seven questions is where we get a chance to interact with you, the listeners and the viewers. If you want your question to be answered here in the show in the near future, leave a question attached to a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, and we may get to it on the show. This question comes from Darren on Apple Podcasts. Who are the top five coaches you played against? Top five coaches I played against? Yeah, your number one is my number one probably as well. Bill Belichick? No question. Oh yeah, Bill. Yeah. And uh, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to mix this, you want to throw in college coaches that's what I was and pro do. coaches, and you can. Yeah, I was gonna go Bill, Nick, uh, Urban Meyer. Mm. Uh, I got two more. That damn Sean McVay, man, he tough. Mm. Yeah, okay. Hey. That's I don't a good list. think I beat Sean. <laughs> I don't think I beat the Rams since he became a damn man. <laughs> nah, he had a good record, especially against Arizona in Arizona. Yeah, I think he's like 8-0 or something crazy like that. Maybe mm-hmm. like 10 now. or something yep. crazy. Uh, and my fifth, man, I'll probably have to say that, uh, that 08 to 2013 San Francisco, Jim Harbaugh. 
Oh, yeah. Boys are tough. <laughs> you know, they, at Candlestick hey, Park when they were hey, playing at Candle, boys, I Candlestick. Never, I, hey man, I'll never forget this dog. We played, we played San Fran. This was either the year before um their last season playing into um in Candlestick, or it was the year, it was the last year playing there, right? Mm -hmm. So we whooping them, we beating them, right? In the fourth quarter, it's eight minutes to go. No, actually, we was down. We needed to stop eight minutes ago. These guys was on their own 15-yard line back and ran the ball all the, They didn't throw the ball one time. All After, running plays. All running plays. Frank Gore left, Frank Gore right. That's when, they, that's when they had just brought, you know, they used to put Frank Gore, like, right behind the quarterback. Mm -hmm. you, you couldn't really see him. Man, not, the first thing he said after the uh, after the press conference, he was like, yep. That's the old traditional grinding meat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh man, the boy went grinding meat on us, man. Yeah, I think yeah. it was a 12 play drive, man. It was something crazy. And they ran the ball 12 times, bro, for like 90, 85 yards or something. Like yeah, that. that's disrespectful. No doubt about no it. No question. Just uh, straight runs. Yeah, and, and with them, we knew they wasn't throwing only only passing plays that San Fran had when they had uh when Jim was there, was freaking uh, just a tight end wheel route. Cause he used to run the ball so much and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and Davis just used to slip out. Somehow, yeah. somehow come way on the wheel route, up the sideline, always streaking. And you know what I mean? And, the, and that was basically their big plays cause Crab, Crab was like more of a possession type receiver. Really, really didn't run any routes over 15 yards. Um, you know, but their whole model was just play great defense mm -hmm. and run the football. So. You know, those was my top top five toughest yeah. coaches, uh to go against for sure. Mine would be Belichick one, Dungey two, mm -hmm. Sean Payton three, okay. Harbaugh four, okay. uh, and I'm not talking about San Fran Harbaugh Ravens. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, and the fifth, who would be the fifth? Ooh, who would be the fifth? That's a good one. Did you play against Bill Parcell? You probably just missed Bill, because I think Bill- hey, when, we, when we played Dallas, I think, I don't know if he was there or not. I don't think, I think his last year was like 06. Yeah. Think, maybe 05. Uh, I can throw Marty Schottenheimer in there as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, Charger. may you rest in peace when, with the Chargers, my rookie year. I think we played my rookie and my second year. Uh, but clearly, you know, I, I can throw some other names at the fifth spot, but that top four is definitely set in stone. So I put, I'll put Andy Reid as my honorable, honorable mentor. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Andy when Andy was with Philadelphia, too. Oh, and he had the, the late, great Jim Johnson. Yeah. Jim Johnson was a DC, man. Jim Johnson was a beast at calling plays. Some of his yep. blitz concepts were unbelievable. So I forgot about I would I would I would throw Andy Reid in there at the fifth uh, during his Philly days with the late, great Jim Johnson. Hey, Darren, great question. Thank you, Darren, for giving us that question on Apple Podcasts. Like I said, if you want to have your question uh, answered on the show, make sure you attach a five-star review, review to your question.